Warriors! Coach JB, your top health and mindset coach in the world. Remember what you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. I wanted to get this out to you very quickly. Just jumped in my bedroom here, got the kids with me, but I want to make sure I get these videos out to you as quickly as possible. Now the SEC, the SEC lawsuit is starting to progress for XRP. Now we get a little hint in here. I highly recommend this gentleman right here, Legal Briefs. I'll click his um, video, right, this actual video. I'm gonna show you a brief portion of his video, but click the link in my description down here. Make sure you go like, subscribe, comment. He is phenomenal. He came on the scene pretty recently and his information is, is amazing. He is giving us the legal perspective of the XRP lawsuit. So there was some big news yesterday. And then today there were some updates that he gave us, which are phenomenal. So watch this together. And there's a cool thing that I heard in here in regards to institutional. Now we all, we remember that um, XRP is for the institutions. We know that, right? And so us little investors, we'll see what happens with this, but listen to what he says about the uh, institutional investors. Okay, so in yesterday's vlog, I talked about how the acting chair of the SEC, Ms. Lee, had released an opinion on February 11, which is Thursday, that basically was a 180 degree change from the prior policy. The new policy from Ms. Lee basically said that the SEC would not waive any prohibitions against companies that had broken securities rules in a litigated settlement. In other words, the SEC would provide no guarantees in a settlement agreement that a company would be allowed to sell its securities in a Regulation D offering. Okay, so my understanding of that is they changed the rule during the, the SEC lawsuit, which was interesting. So. My perspective, my understanding of this, I could be wrong, is that basically if we lose the lawsuit, that means they cannot continue to trade XRP. I speculated yesterday that this meant Ripple had offered a large concession to the SEC in order to settle the case, and that was what triggered the statement from Ms. Lee. Namely, I proffered that Ripple had agreed to be regulated in its sale of XRP to the extent of filing a Reg D with the SEC and only to sell to large investors. But I also spent. Okay, did you hear what he said? So what we do know is that Ripple is working to settle this. So that's fantastic. So they're trying to settle with the SEC, and they said we will settle. Let's listen to what he said just again, really quickly. We'll settle, and we'll only sell to large investors. But they seem to have rejected that. And only to sell to large investors. But I also speculated that the about face in the policy statement was a rejection of that settlement agreement. In other words, SEC said no to the settlement. But not so fast. Literally, while I was videotaping yesterday's vlog, SEC commissioners Ms. Pierce and Mr. Roisman issued their own statement, which kind of blew my mind. It's very abnormal. So here is the conclusion from that statement. Quote, for the reasons stated above, we disagree with Acting Chair Lee's attempt to rescind that policy by directing the Division of Enforcement to decline to recommend contingent settlement offers to the commission for consideration. This change marks a return to an unwieldy process that treats as completely separate what is in fact interrelated. It reintroduces an artificial separation between the process by which an entity reaches a resolution on its violations of securities laws and the process by which it obtains clarity with respect to the collateral consequences of those violations. The result will be a longer period between initiation and resolution of enforcement matters. We do not see how this outcome advances either the commission's mission or serves the interests of investors." Close quote. I saw this and I really I couldn't believe what I was seeing at first last night. First, the chair of the SEC is kind of the boss, even though she's only acting chair until Gessler is confirmed by Congress and then he takes over. So the two commissioners are directly con okay, So let's pause for a moment. Now, Gary Glenser, remember, is from MIT, right? He's a professor at MIT with blockchain. And I've showed you videos where he's talking about XRP and Bitcoin within the blockchain. So as Gensler coming on, a crypto friendly SEC chairman, that should be helpful. Contradicting the head of the agency. Wow, it's so rare. Kind of still boggles my mind. Now, I would point out in these hyper political times that Miss Lee is a Biden appointee and Miss Pierce and Mr. Royceman are Trump appointees, I believe. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But right now, there are only four commissioners, and I think it's definitely worth your time to listen to Commissioner Pierce describe how the commission votes and how it operates on whether litigation is to be begun, to be begun against a company like Ripple.
Yeah, I think one thing that sometimes can be a bit difficult for people from outside the agency to understand, and it, it because every agency is different, and ours is one that's run by this commission, which is made up of five people, and I'm one of those five people. And so when we adopt a rule or when we, um, when we authorize an enforcement action, we're all sitting there together and we all vote for it. And so if, if there are five people on the commission and three of the five vote for something, it will move forward. You can watch the full interview on Forecast News YouTube channel, really good channel. So that is how the commencement of litigation has begun by a majority vote. But I cannot find a corresponding rule on whether a vote is required for a settlement. At first, I thought it, it would be required. And maybe before 2010, it would have been required. But in 2010, it seems like all executive functions of the SEC were placed. All right, Warriors. So that's the update so far. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. So things that stand out to me is that they are straight up saying, hey, listen, we're going for the institutional investors. We know that, right? We know this was designed for banks. That's why I'm so bullish on it. The solve for banks, the real world solve is unbelievable. The liquidity, the cross-border payments, allowing a bank to be up and running within what, five weeks on a cloud system. They are very efficient. They're able to solve a real world problem. They're able to help the banks provide liquidity, on-demand liquidity, helping them free up that capital use for other things to build profitability. So Warriors, I'm gonna keep bringing this information when it comes out. Please go like, subscribe, comment to his channel. He gives a really good unbiased view from a lawyer's perspective. I'm sure he's not giving financial advice, nor am I giving financial advice, but it's good for us to know this, to hear from a banker's perspective, a lawyer's perspective, an ex-banker's perspective, but I'm just a long-haired hippie dude giving you information. Now remember, if you know the game, you can be played. I'm not asking you to believe a word I say. What I'm asking you to do is instead of getting the fish and eating for a day, let's learn how to get the fishing pole and learn how to eat for a lifetime. And as we say now, learn how to farm so you can feed a nation. My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. Warriors, rise. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. XRP to the moon, baby. Let's go.